Pearl Tam and I am the Senior Director of Content and Community over here at Grand Innovators. Welcome to today's summit on multicultural marketing. Today we'll be joined by marketing leaders from Walmart, Pharrell Commun Communications, Planet Fitness, and other top brands. Please be sure to ask questions and use the chat to engage with both our speakers and attendees. Without further ado, I am thrilled to welcome our first speakers of the day. We have Anna Ganad Schneckman, Senior Director of Brand Strategy at Walmart, Candy Strickland, Vice President Campaign Management at Burwell Communications, and this session will be moderated by Les Harrison, Decline and Agency Partnerships at Outfront Media. Hi, Pearl, good morning. Good morning, Les, how are you? Doing well on, a, on this Friday. Yeah, it's always good to be a Friday. <laughs> There we go, Anna, Candy. Hi. Hi, Les. Hi, Les, how are you? Good morning or good afternoon, depending on where you are. Very true, very true. Good morning, good afternoon. How is everyone today? Very good, thanks for having us. Awesome. Yes, very good, happy Friday. Happy Friday to you too. Pearl, I think we're, we're ready to rock and roll, thank you. Hi everyone, uh, my name is Les Harrison. I am on the Brand Partnerships team at Outfront Media. Uh, I'm so honored to be moderating this fireside chat today with Anna and Candy. Uh, they have so kindly titled this chat, Progress, Not Perfection, the Role of Brands in Racial Equity and Social Justice Conversations. There's been a lot of talk around uh, the role of brands over the past year. We've certainly heard from many marketers giving examples right here on this brand innovator stage of how their brands are living out their purpose and excited to hear what, what we're, what we're going to share today. Um, even publishers are getting into this conversation as well. As one of the largest out-of-home media companies in the U.S., Outfront is committed to helping people, places, and businesses go, grow stronger. This purpose gets manifested on our canvases nationwide. And as part of our continued commitment, we recently partnered with Color of Change on a campaign titled Until Justice is Real, which is currently running in nine cities. Now, I know Anna and Candy, you guys have been working hard over the past year you mind telling us a little bit about, about you and your work? Absolutely. I can start. Hi, everyone. I'm Anna Schechtman. I'm part of the brand strategy team here at Walmart. Um, and the work that I do, just to give you a little bit of background about myself, is I really lead the brand conversations around our Live Better Promise. So thinking about our purpose and really being in the Live Better business, but more specifically, how that manifests into conversations with diverse communities across the country. Um, so that's really important to us. Um, this is really meaningful as it relates to speaking directly to diverse communities, um, whether that be the Black community, the Hispanic community, the gay community. Community, but also how those conversations really um, manifest in other areas of our conversation, how we, um, how we really think about, you know, the ways um, we include uh, conversations around inclusion and equity within sustainability, U.S. manufacturing, local giving. So those are the areas that we've been thinking about over the past year, especially um, as many of those conversations are coming to light across the country. Just a small job, right? A, a small job. <laughs> Candy, can you tell us a little bit about yourself and your work? Sure. I'm Candy Strickland, I'm the VP Campaign Management for Burrell Communications. And uh, Burrell in 2021 is celebrating 50 years of leadership in the diversity marketing space. And we work with Walmart as a partner and a host of other clients, and really guiding them in the ongoing conversation. Uh, with their consumers. Um, we are a, a nimble and very excited group of marketers based out of uh, Chicago, Illinois, but we have uh, team members really across the country. And uh, at this time, which is an exciting time to be doing the work, uh, we work with Walmart in the capacity mm -hmm. of managing retail campaigns, as well as uh, what we call AA Evergreen work, which is brand reputation work for African-American. So very awesome. excited to have this conversation today. Very cool. And congratulations on, uh, on the anniversary. That's uh, very impressive. Thank you. Uh, and let's, let's kick it off, Anna. I would love to know, you know, this past year has definitely been challenging. I would love to, uh, and I'm sure the audience would love to understand, you know, how has your work changed from, from a brand perspective just you know, in, in, in light of the recent events over the past year? Of course. I mean, let, let me tell you a little bit about myself and how I got here. Um, 
I'm actually fairly new at Walmart. I'm about six months in. But one of the things that I knew, and our CMO, William White, speaks to this as well, is that Walmart is one of the few organizations within this country that truly have the size and scale to make meaningful change. When they, um, when they say something, they are 100% behind it. And one of the things that I was really passionate about um, as, as part of the, the, things, the great things I was hearing about Walmart was their uh, commitment to fighting systemic racism. So last year, they, um, they created or stood up the Center for Racial Equity, which is um, our commitment to diverse communities. Um, you know, in, it's, it's essentially $100 million to create the, the Center for Racial Equity, and it focuses on uh, four key areas of conversation. Um, and so for me, a lot of that promise really starts from the business. And a lot of that is really framing out what is it that we are going to stand behind? And then how then does marketing support that? So from the marketing standpoint, when I joined and really kind of thought about, you know, what is our purpose, um, you know, in going to market, really thinking about not just those seasonal moments where we, we feel like we have to show up, but really developing what is an always on strategy in speaking directly to communities of color. What does that mean for us? I mean, it means that we are always thinking about meaningfully showing up, authentically showing up in the right ways, in some celebratory ways, of course, but sometimes in more meaningful, more commemorative ways, depending on the, t the time frame, the mindset, and all the conversations that we are having within this country. And so those are the ways that we've really changed. It, it's not necessarily a seasonal kind of retail moment that we're focused on. We really are trying to find the sort of sense of heartbeat where the community is, really understanding them at any moment in time, and really ensuring that we are delivering for them in those meaningful ways, um, not just within moments that you expect us to be in, but in all the ways that we are showing up, um, even in sort of less um, eventful or awareness moment kinds of moments. That's, that's awesome. Um, you, you must have done some sort of research to understand how, how this all you know, how to respond and all that good stuff. Do you mind kind of walking through, you know, some of that research and, and what that told you about, about the, your customer? Yeah, of course. So this research was led by our amazing partners at Burrell. Mm -hmm. And we did qualitative and quantitative studies with uh, uh, many uh, 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 participants in the Black community across the country. And, you know, after last year, a lot of, um, a lot of the community was really like, hey, Thank you for the thoughts and prayers. I really appreciate it from everyone. <laughs> now, where are your receipts? Show me where the rubber hits the road. And I think that is where a lot of our intentfulness around the dimensions of conversation has really started, uh, really started and really framed, you know, how we, how we thought about the kind of conversations we wanna have. So the research told us that we have to figure out what the customer needs, show us your receipts, show us the business receipts. So us as marketers talking meaningfully to the organization around what are the areas we can meaningfully deliver to this community. And then really framing that out against where the brand is and where the brand is today and where can we move forward with it? Because unlike other brands that, you know, perhaps have a little bit more permission to be at the center of the conversation, we realize not everyone has that same kind of permission. And so we really were trying to triangulate between the customer need, which is showing them our receipts, the business opportunity, which is, you know, really making sure that we're partnering closely about those receipts meaningfully. And then where the brand is, which is, hey, um, we haven't quite been in this conversation yet. We want to be, and we want to be there authentically. Now, how do we make those three things come together in a meaningful way, in an authentic way? For, yeah. for sure. Yeah, and Les, I would just add that part of the importance of the relationship between Burrell and uh, Walmart is really talking about that conversation. And when is the right time? What is the right message when the brand enters into it? Um, Anna mentioned about the retail presence that Walmart has. So there's always a lot of conversation, a lot of messaging around the seasons, you know, spring, summer, back to school. But the conversation that we're talking about is one that needs to be sustained across the retail seasons and really talking about the things that matter to the community. So of course, you know, we buy groceries, there are things that we're gonna to do to prepare for summer, 
but there are also bigger conversations and topics that are happening in homes, uh, African-American homes across the country. And so Burrell seeks to really guide Walmart as to how they enter into those conversations in a way that's respectful, a way that's relevant, a way that's timely. So that's kind of the juxtaposition between being like the largest retailer there is, but also realizing that your customers have an expectation that you're also gonna talk to them about the life things that matter. Yeah, that that's, that's really great stuff. You guys, you know, mentioning the, the collaboration between the two, I think um, you guys have, have some really great work to share um, during May and June. I, I believe we have a, a quick video. Um, and then after we uh, play the video, if, if you guys wouldn't mind us, mind telling us, you know, a little bit about that conversation and, and kind of what led to this creative. So uh, BI, if you guys will uh, play the uh, video around Center for Racial Equity. Hello? There we go. The Center for Racial Equity at Walmart was created to address systemic racism. Walmart is investing in organizations that are accelerating change and force systems, which are health, education, criminal justice, and finance. We're identifying needs within the Black and African American community and sowing seeds that will bear fruit for many years to come. So I'll just hop in here. Uh, thanks for sharing that spot uh, this afternoon. You know, so as we all know, we're nearing uh, very quickly the one year anniversary of the murder of George Floyd. and. Um, just like last year, this year, it is a very dicey uh, type of situation for brands to navigate. There's an expectation in the community that brands will at least acknowledge, I think, the, the pain, um, the fear, the anger that's being felt across the board. However, um, in this instance, you know, this is not necessarily a conversation that you're going to jump right in and start talking about if it's not an area where you've been leading. And so as partner to Walmart, our recommendation was like, you know what, let's talk about what Walmart is doing, the commitment that was made June 2020 to invest $100 million to really address uh, and help in systemic racism and key areas that overarchingly uh, impact the African-American community. So the spot that you just saw is one of three um, online videos that's also accompanied with social media and digital that really talk about that $100 million investment and then even share stories across the organizations that receive the dollars and then what uh, we foresee to be the long lasting impact of that investment. And so like the key learning here is this is, is not an issue that one organization, even as large and impressive as Walmart, can solve. But every brand, every organization can own their commitment to join the fight. And also, it's very important that brands aren't shy about sharing what they're doing. Otherwise, you can't assume that your customers know. Great. Yeah. That's right, Candy. And um, there were many long nights about, you know, it felt like now that, you know, our creative is out in the world that, you know, is it, it's the right thing to do in a foregone conclusion that we would talk about this. But there were many long nights. I called Candy and I said, <laughs> you know, are we ready to have these conversations? Is this brand just yeah. where it is right now and where the customer conversation is? Are we going to meaningfully bridge that conversation? And one of the things that, you know, we really, you know, partnered on in terms of like a mantra as part of the conversation to showing up meaningfully is progress, not perfection, which is to say that there are elements that we are all still working on both personally and professionally to really be a true and meaningful ally to communities, to diverse communities. And that at the end of the day, we are all slowly walking through that and Walmart ought to show up 
because we do have the size and scale and the opportunity to make meaningful change in that way where we can speak authentically to the things we're doing. Um, and we hope to do to continue to do that. Um, this is just the start of the conversation. Yeah. And I think this is going to be a multi-year conversation around our live better promise to the black community. And that's how I think about, you know, how my my purpose work all up really links back to really this, this sharp conversation, which is what are all the ways we're delivering our live better promise? This is just one of them. So one of the things that I thought was interesting is, you know, we, we, we just heard about you know some of the the social things that are going on in the world and and yeah. why it's the right time. But you know why is it time for for you know I think for brands to be having this conversation? I mean we we understand like some of the stuff going on, but you know why now, right? A year later, right? Or you know whenever? Yeah. So what I will say, and Anna alluded to this last year it seemed like the community was really looking to see which brands were gonna hand raise and say, we understand, we, we are with you. So a year later, the conversation never stopped. If anything, the conversation heated up. And I think what has been very uh, surprising to some, um, not as surprising to others, is the fact that we look at the role that millennials and particularly the Gen Z generation has held at the center of this conversation. And I think this is why we're having it now because we have a new generation of uh, folks who are saying to brands, I'm not just gonna give you my dollar. Like my dollar means something and I'm looking to invest it in brands that support the things that are important to me. And you can't just you know, create a spot and say, it's important to me. So they are looking for the receipts. They are looking for proof. And I think that the brands that really want to connect with their consumers in a very uh, special way have to have that commitment. It's going to grow from the inside out and it's not going to be able to be contained when a brand really galvanizes around social justice. Um, so I think that's why Now's the time because consumers are saying now is the time. Yeah. And I would echo that, Candy, for sure. We don't just see that in our research around the Black community. We mm -hmm. also see it with our research with the Hispanic community. Um, uh, we are doing similar work with our um, uh, other partner agencies around um, the Hispanic sentiment. And we have heard, um, and especially within um, the Latinx uh, conversation, that um, the younger generations are really um, voicing their opinions. They're also influencing their families, um, especially in multi-generational households, um, really framing a sense of um, uh, equity and social justice is something our, our, young, our young consumers are really interested in. And that really does then not only speaks to their um, purchase habits or purchase intent, but then also actually affects their communities or their sort of circles of, um, of trust and, and, and conversation. So that really does have an impact to older generations as well. Yeah, yeah it, it's, it's, that's some impressive stuff. Um, it, it, you know, it's, it's, Candy, we'd love to hear your perspective on like why it's difficult for brands. It sounds like Walmart's really leaning in and you know, really taking, you know, taking all the research and, and putting it all together. But, you know, some brands haven't really taken that, that, that dive forward and, you know, it must be difficult. So we'd love to get your perspective on, you know, why is it so difficult for them to decide and when and how and all, all that around the social conversation? Yeah. So this is a conversation, you know, it's not new uh, in the African-American community and it's not easy. And so whenever you have this type of conversation where there is so much at stake, right? So the question is, do I have a right to be in this conversation? And if I say yes, then what exactly should I say? And when should I say it? There's a lot of risk assigned to uh, how you show up. But what I would offer uh, is that there's also risk associated to not showing up because even when a brand is silent, the community is filling in the blanks of what that silence means. And so, you know, we advise our clients, including Walmart, that it's important to decide as a brand 
where you stand, how you'd like to talk about, um, how you want to support the community, how you are supporting the community, but it is important for brands to tell their own story. And so I think that's the key thing. The brand needs to, to speak for the brand and also just, I would encourage them, but Rel will encourage them, focus on the brand fans. There will always be naysayers. There will always be the consumers or, or folks in the public who say you're not doing enough or you're not doing the right thing. But if the message is focused on brand fans, the people that believe in your brand are rooting for you, want to work with you, see the collaboration, see you as a partner in the community. And if you speak from a place of truth, which is that brand's truth, you should land in the right place. So, you know, it's not easy. Like Anna said, there will be a lot of late night conversations. There are always stakeholders that need to be considered. There are always outcomes that we need to think about. So it's not as straightforward as say what you feel, do what you know. Like there's a lot more involved to, to Anna's point to even get to 30 seconds that we're willing to televise. For sure. So, so also sounds like it's, um, you know, the brands that are succeeding are taking this consumer uh, consumer centric approach to, to DEI. And, you know, I, I think, you know, as we've got a, an audience out there of, of marketers <clears throat> and agency representation, you know, is there anything that, that you two could, could kind of give them as sort of guardrails or, you know, advice or guidance as to how they should go about doing it? Or... So I'm, I'm going to toss this to Anna, but, you know, I will say this. <laughs> it is a moment by moment conversation. And I think one of the things that gets us tripped up is we as marketers, we as brands, we as individuals, right? We wanna feel that the actions that we take today are gonna to have immediate impact. And this is a huge issue. Uh, and it takes all of us taking those steps in the moment. What I would say is what's most important is to create a safe space to have the tough conversation. And it should be safe for everyone. It should be safe for the person who's living the experience. It should be safe for the person who's trying to understand the experience. It should be safe for the person who's saying, you know, I just don't get it, but I want to understand. I want to learn more. There are moments where brands can stand up. There are moments where individuals can stand up. And I think a big part of moving this forward is forums like this that help people get educated about the work that's being, uh, that needs to be done and having people commit to doing the work. Um, so I would say the, the one guardrail is don't think any one action can change everything. And I would say the second thing, let go of some of your fear. If not all of it, let go of just enough to learn more and commit to doing something. Candy, I couldn't agree more. I think that is where, you know, you have helped us uh, really navigate through like what that feels like, because um, oftentimes you are more concerned about perhaps the backlash um, than you are about the intention. And so really framing a lot of our conversations around what the customer is asking for us to deliver on in terms of what they want to hear and then the intention behind it, making sure we are brave and courageous and holding hands about it. The only thing I would add to that in terms of like continuing to be intentful is um, I have many um, conversations with many um, partners internally. So we all held hands. Um, it was not a marketing decision. It wasn't just a uh, Anna and her, <laughs> and her bosses and the CMO, like, you know, making, you know, doing, making decisions unilaterally. We were really trying to make sure that all voices were heard, that we were getting a lot of perspective, both within, within marketing and outside marketing. And even between diverse colleagues, we were having yeah. dissension um, and really navigating, mm -hmm. you know, how best to like really understand this person's perspective versus that person's perspective is really um, the framing of the opportunity. And at the end of the day, it is just going to be, you know, let's hold hands and kind of move through that conversation. But let's all just make sure we are rooted in 
um, where the brand is and how we want to move forward because that's the right thing to do for the customer. Um, and so that's been, you know, an area that, that we have had to make sure we are intentional about. I think the second area that I see, and it's an outcome of those kind of conversations, is that racial equity, social justice, these conversations are quite large. And a lot of people in the country really want to know about it. It's not a multicultural marketing conversation. It is an everyone conversation. Mm -hmm. And we have to make sure that we're all on the same page about like, okay, when we deliver this message to market, are we doing it for general market because everyone's interested or are we doing it specifically for the black community? And sometimes those conversations are absolutely the same. They want to hear the same thing and they want to hear intentionality and they want to hear meaning and purpose, but sometimes they're slightly different. So really understanding like and hearing, hearing between the lines, um, like what the research is saying or what your customer is saying is some of the work we also had to do to make sure that the, the level of intention was not just for broadly, this is what we stand for, specifically we stand for you. It's great. You guys certainly yeah. know your, your customers and um, you know, having that knowledge has really you know, played out very nicely in, in this part of the conversation as well, especially around um, the, the racial inequity and the, the social injustice. Uh, Candy, another question for you, just I love your purview on, on multiple clients. It, it, it's, really, um, it, it's a really great perspective. What, what are some like mis, misconceptions that brands have about, about their role in this type of conversation? You know, I think um, number one is brands think that they don't have to enter into the conversation. Uh, I think that's the first thing is if, if, if I'm quiet, this moment is going to pass. Uh, but I think even that silence is being recorded. As we do social listening as an agency, we see more and more, you know, forums and chat rooms and even uh, groups where people are calling out the brands that have taken a stance of, we're just gonna be silent, we're gonna sit this one out. So I think um, that for brands that maybe are a bit more conservative, have tried to operate on the outside of what's happening in society, they're seeing that there's no longer an option for that. And what I'm seeing more and more is uh, folks realizing that intention alone without action, you get no credit for that. And so um, I, I think that for some brands more than others, that's a bit of a pivot, but for brands that are used to telling their story and used to weathering the storm, right? To the brands that are, you know, I would say mature like a Walmart that has had to take uh, the hits from the fans as well as people who are not fans. I think you still have to navigate a bit uh, but it becomes, um, they're a bit more comfortable having that difficult conversation uh, because you do have to stay true to your brand. Um, and so I think that's the thing. There's never a point when, when a brand should really be silent. I think the nuances, knowing what you can talk about. And, uh, you know, so it, it's not anything that we solve in a 30 minute talk here, of course. <laughs> But uh, you, you can get the sense of, and, and even when Anna mentioned, many, many layers of stakeholders, many ongoing conversations, because just like the weather, conversations shift. And so there's a tonality that you need to be careful of. And, and then there's um, also just looking at the timing and, and making sure that you wanna land in the right place. And sometimes there are hot spots you need to avoid. It's, it's certainly interesting because everyone has a voice now, right? Social media has made it to where yeah. one misstep of a brand and, you know, you're, you're blasted everywhere. And it, it's really, you know, and, and that's probably what scares a lot of these brands in, yeah. in jumping. They don't want to be that brand that's on, you know, everyone's mind for doing something that's bad um, or, or that's deemed, you know, it, it not equal or, or what have you. So it's certainly a, 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 t a tough, a tough um, road to navigate. Uh, you know, I think one of the, the last things I have for you, and then we can get into the, the, the Q&A, but, you know, brands have to ask themselves, you know, obviously, like, you know, not only just do we get in, but, but how do we do it? And, and, and they have to be really authentic about it. Both of you guys have mentioned 
that mm -hmm. you can't just check the box and move right on and you can't just be silent. So it, it almost kind of puts them in a place where they've, they've got to respond and do it. So what are some of the things that, that maybe, you know, you guys talk through or that, that Burrell suggests um, maybe some questions that they should ask themselves to, to start this conversation and navigate it. And, and also, you know, maybe some of the key things that are done internally, because it sounds like a lot of the socialization and, and, and ways to get this done is not just, you know, um, putting out an ad, you've got to really, you know, kind of look at your organization as a whole and talk to people internally and, and really, you know, it's a, it's a really Herculean effort on, on everyone's behalf. Yeah, so Anna, let's play a game of ping pong here. I'm, I'm gonna toss okay. one out. Yes. So number one, I would say it is not a one and done. You cannot drop an ad and then stop talking. The conversation must continue. My second is acts, not just ads. The conversation ought to continue, but also receipts. Our brand building, as we all know, and in, in, as brand uh, builders, are not just made inside marketing, they're made within the experience of the organization and what the conversations we have around our actions. And I would say number three is you have to be mindful of the conversation that you're entering. So there's nothing worse than a brand jumping into a topic and being off topic. Everyone's going to see that. Everyone's going to feel that. So you have to make sure that you have a pulse on the conversation that's happening and that what you're saying is relevant. Do I, do I need to do one more? <laughs> sure. <laughs> what, why not? Um, close, close out here and then we can run into some questions. Making sure that you really actually know the customer. Like, I know we all say that because we're all in a cons, cus, you know, customer centric conversation, mm -hmm. et cetera. But are you really listening? Are there really, uh, like, do you really understand the framing of the conversation? For example, sometimes, uh, conversations around this can be very commemorative and the tone is, you know, a little bit more about sadness, but actually the dimensionality of a customer experience also includes joy, also includes hope, also includes optimism. Do we have other areas of conversation that deliver on those dimensions of the experience? And I think that's, that's really where the, a lot of this is really going to start to come together uh, for the customer and for the brand. That was that was a fun game. I like I like that <laughs> I like that uh, fire fire round or whatever, right? Yeah. Uh, we, got, we got a few questions from the audience, um, so we'll, we'll kick those out. Um, one of the questions that I that I really like is, uh, especially with with an audience of, of marketers and, and 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 partners out there, is you know what are the challenges that you faced in implementing purpose led programs, and then on the flip side, like what are those opportunities as well? Oh, okay. So I'll start. You know, there are times, you know, from the agency side where we have a great idea of what the messaging should be, but maybe it's not quite the right fit or, you know, maybe the client's not quite ready to make that particular statement at that time. So I think the tight rope that we walk is making sure that we have a message that's relevant, it's credible, but it also is tightly aligned with you know the brand's culture. The opportunity with that, after you kind of walk that tightrope and we nail it, is when you see the evidence in culture, in market, and you see the consumer's response to the work. So that's the win. But I think even bigger than that, there is more applause inside the brand, and Anna can co-sign on this, when the associates, see the work and they feel proud of the statement that the company has made. So I think it's not losing sight of the fact that yes, there are consumers that we're, we're reaching, but there are also internal stakeholders that are individuals who are just as tied to this work and we need to do the work for them as well. Absolutely, uh, Candy, especially with a company like Walmart where our, there's, you know, more than a million, a million and a half associates in the United States. It's as much the conversation is about them as it is about, you know, the customers we serve. For mm -hmm. me specifically, when I, in, in terms of both my past life and my current, um, you know, role here at Walmart, we've often talked about the, the tension of value versus values. Value is business building. 
I see the dollars. I, I put an ad out there. I see, you know, how many, uh, uh, how much return on investment I get from that. And we all know that brand building is a marathon and it's a multi-year vision and it has to be consistent and it has to be focused. And so that's been a lot of the challenge, which is that perhaps, you know, we start this conversation today with the community, but I might actually not see the needle move until next year. And so really making sure that we're all holding hands um, about the intentfulness and the, the long-term area of opportunity here. That is actually also the other part of, the, in terms of the opportunity, which is collaboration, because inevitably, especially within this conversation, you have a lot of marketing and non-marketing stakeholders who are as passionate about the same thing. And I'm not just talking about social justice or racial equity. Some stakeholders are passionate about sustainability and they wanna engage you and yeah. they know it's the right thing to do. And that's where it also gets interesting because you start to then um, bring that purpose, purpose-led program building up the funnel to some of the more business conversations and the intentfulness starting from the business so that we can affect change. I can create the on-ramp for you to have that conversation um, it, with the community while you are still building the sort of business areas of opportunity. And so there's a really great sort of area of collaboration within the organization. I love that. I'm wondering too, as, as you know, we hear a little bit about how it's tough to get workers and you know that as, as we start to break out of this pandemic um this this pride that people have i know certainly i do as as being part of outfront and this partnership with color of change and the purpose that we've done i have pride in my organization and i'm mm -hmm. sure that that you know the the associates at walmart same there too right and that they they they're they're so they're so in love with their job that and and the fact that their company is standing for something and and do and has beliefs very similar to them. It, it really probably strikes a chord there um, all the way through the organization. So that's uh, really great to see. I think we have time for maybe one more question. Um, this one is more about kind of the, the communicating to your consumers. So how do you guys um, look at brand purpose and um, how has it impacted just the regular kind of marketing efforts uh, just in general? Yeah. So. When you say regular marketing efforts, I think uh, everything is seen through this lens of uh, diversity, equity, and inclusion, because that's the world that we live in. So I think there, today there is no more regular marketing efforts, if you will, versus marketing or messaging around um, justice and equity, because they're all one. And so I think what's really amazing now is maybe years ago when we looked at um, African-American marketing in particular is necessarily needing to be a separate line item or a separate program, the conversations we have around retail are inclusive because we're thinking always about the consumer and the audience that we're trying to reach. And we're realizing that it's not monolithic. Like we can't just do work and say it's general market because general market now is brown and black and pink and green, like all the colors, right? And so I think what has changed for the better is now we don't have to have a separate meeting to talk about inclusion. Every conversation is inclusive. Every message needs to think about the various segments of consumers that are watching it. And we have to think about those nuances. And so the beauty of it is when we're around the table now, the table is a lot more diverse as well. Awesome. Absolutely. I think, I think it's a both, the conversation has to be both deep and wide, which means that the purpose conversation is not just a function of, like Anna talks about these kinds of conversations. It's Anna also shares her knowledge and the intention across all the marketers within this organization so that we can really infuse it within areas of opportunity. Really, really, really great stuff, ladies. I appreciate the conversation and all the work you're doing. Uh, regular marketing will no longer be vocabulary in, in my, <laughs> my vocabulary. Um, thank you, Candy. Um, Pearl, I see you. Uh, your smiling face. 
Yeah, no, I'm just so proud of all the great work that you have done and, and standing up for our community and your and the, your customers. It's it's a, totally inspirational. I, I keep doing what you're doing. Thank you Thank guys you so, so much for, much for having us today. Candy, Ann, and Les. Yes, thanks again. Thanks, thanks so much, Anna. See you, Les. Thank you. Bye. Thanks, everyone. Have a great weekend. <laughs> See ya. That was such a great session. Um, we hope to hear from them again soon. Next up, we have Edward Borelli. He's a vice president of marketing from Planet Fitness, and his session will be moderated by Carol Cooper, CMO of Live Intent. Hello, welcome to the stage. Hello, how are you? Hi. Happy I'm Friday. Great. Happy I'm Friday. Happy Friday. From you both. <laughs> You seem ready to go, so I'll be back as you're wrapping. All right, cool. Thanks, Pearl. Really appreciate it. And uh, super excited about this conversation we're about to have, Edward. And uh, you know, before we jump in, let's let's do some some quick intros. And so for those of you out there who don't know me, uh, my name is Corel Cooper. I am currently the CMO at Live Intent. And if you're unfamiliar with Live Intent, uh, we are a marketing technology platform that is powered by the email address where we provide uh, monetization and advertising solutions for publishers and brands to help them acquire, retain, and monetize their, their audience. I am also the co-founder and co-host of Minority Report Podcast, where we highlight people of color, women, and LGBTQ plus leaders within business, media, and tech. And Edward, I'll pass it over to you. Do a quick intro. Yes. Hi, my name is Edward Borelli. I am a VP of marketing with Planet Fitness. I've been in marketing and advertising close to 25 years. So showing my age here, but I've worked for a number of brands, including Nike, New Era, Levi's, Home Depot. And I've also been on the agency side, uh, working with McDonald's, Taco Bell. So um, either either I can't keep a job, or I've worked for a lot of great brands. <laughs> I'm gonna say I worked for a lot of great brands. So. You're 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 in high demand. Let's go with that. <laughs> That's the way things run nowadays. So there it is. There it is. Yeah. All right. So let's let's talk multicultural marketing. And I, I want to start with maybe level setting on what does multicultural marketing actually mean? Because I feel like at times. The, yeah. the phrase, the wording gets tossed around a lot, especially in conversations related to diversity, equity, and inclusion. And so maybe not everyone understands what multicultural marketing is. So, so give us your definition. How do you define it? Yeah, that's a, it's a great question. I mean, multicultural marketing to me, it, it really starts with the brand understanding that they have a diverse consumer set. That's that's the first that's the first step. Mm -hmm. That each one of those consumers are equally important to them, you know, and understanding the nuances of those consumers and how can they engage them in a meaningful and authentic way. I mean, that's multicultural marketing in, in a, a nutshell. And it's not just about putting people of different races and ethnicities, age and gender in, in your creative, mm -hmm. really, you know, understanding the nuances of engagement and, and how important that is. So. Gotcha. Gotcha. And, and, and I also feel like um, at times, maybe when teams are putting together their marketing plans, right, there's the marketing plan and then there's, multicultural marketing right and, and I want and I, and I want to get your thoughts on that because personally to me multicultural marketing is the marketing plan yeah. and and I and I and I as someone who's worked for all these brands in the past how, how does multicultural marketing fit into sort of the overall plan you you, you hit around the head I mean it, that is the plan it should be your plan it, it, it used to be, you know, a very siloed approach, right? Mm -hmm. Where you, you're talking to Black people one way, you're talking to Hispanics another way, and then there's this general consumer market set, right? And that, and that worked too. 
And it still does work on a lot of levels, but really, you know, it's, it's, uh, we've evolved so much, you know, and it's really about, you know, projecting diversity, projecting what the world really is. And it's not just to target people with different backgrounds and different uh, ethnicities, et cetera. It's people want to see that. People want to see diversity on the screen. You know, they want to see people different than themselves. And, 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 you know, that's important. That's the the most important thing. Yeah. Yeah. And, and speaking about, you know, you talked about sort of that evolution of marketing, I think consumers have evolved as well too, right? I I feel one of the, the, the trends we've seen over the last, you know, I'll just say, you know, 15 to 18 months, right? is consumers really investing in brands, buying products that align with their values, with their beliefs, as you said, you know, seeing themselves in an authentic way, right? On, on top of that, Edward, right? What are some other benefits to multicultural marketing? I mean, really, I mean, the, to me, the biggest benefit is you hit it right on the head. It's, it's about the consumer being able to see themselves being a part of a brand Mm -hmm. and and that drives empathy and it drives connectivity. And, you know, if your brand's able to do that, you know, that's the most powerful thing in Arsenal is to connect with people that are in a meaningful way and connecting with people at the right time, the right place, the right, the right, the right moment you know, that Mm -hmm. people want to see and uh, how your brand is interacting. So um, I think the biggest wake up call for brands in particular really was the Black Panther movie, right? (laughs) You know, it was, uh, people were blown away that a movie um, with a fully Black cast, you you know, appealed to everybody, Mm -hmm. you know, Mm -hmm. people wanted to see it. And people wanted to uh, uh, understand the perspective there. And it's really changed everything now, Mm -hmm. you Mm -hmm. know, and companies have embraced that and are uh, realizing that it's not just about targeting people with different backgrounds, it's targeting everyone. So, Mm -hmm. and so you, you, you mentioned Black Panther did a great job, right? You mentioned Mm -hmm. the fact that, you know, as a brand, you want to be authentic. But at the same time, we still see brands out there making so many mistakes, right? <laughs> like, wh- wh- why does this keep happening? And, and what do we got to do to fix it? Like, wh- yeah. why does it keep happening? <laughs> you know, it, it, it keeps happening. It's, it's okay to make mistakes, first of all. You know, it's going to cost you. <laughs> but, you know, are you learning from those mistakes? Uh, the reason why I think it really happens is some of these brands still don't have a diverse team and diverse mm-hmm. leadership. Uh, and it's not just about diversity, it's creating the environment where it's truly inclusive and people feel valued. You know, if you have a diverse team and you're getting, you're truly listening to people uh, and listening and creating the environment where people can express their uh, perspectives, you know, you shouldn't be making these mistakes. Mm-hmm. You shouldn't, you, should, you shouldn't. You know, and a lot of time you have this trickle down structure for some of these companies. And that's why this is happening. You know, uh, people at the top making decisions aren't listening, you know, and aren't uh, open to engaging folks in, in the right way. So. Gotcha. All right. So so more more listening, engaging folks in the right way and, and building out diverse teams. Yes. And, you know, and, and, and with that said, you, you mentioned at the beginning, you've worked for some, some really awesome brands throughout your career, Nike, New Era, now, you know, Planet Fitness. Through your lens, through the lens of being a Black man in marketing, in the space, um, what has your multicultural marketing experience been like? It, it's been a whirlwind, you know, I mean, like I said, I started my career in, in the late 90s and just thinking about how our society has changed, you know, mm-hmm. and how, you know, we're having a lot of uncomfortable conversations now, 
you know, it's, it's just been an incredible journey, you know, but it's been also a difficult one because, you know, when people see a black marketer, they think I just understand marketing to black people, you know, or, um, you know, the people, people don't understand that, you know, I have a unique perspective on just consumers and people in general, you know, and how that should be valued within organizations. I do have to say a lot of the companies that are doing it right, you know, still have a lot of work to do. Mm-hmm. You know, I think that's the biggest part, especially internally and, and, and who, who's creating these campaigns, who's coming up with these ideas, who's evolving the organization. So uh, we've come a long way, brother, I have to say, <laughs> you know, yeah. from yeah. the late 90s to today. You know, and um, I'm, I'm excited to see where we're going to continue evolving, you know, so um, but we still have a lot of work to do. Once we stop working, then we're not evolving and, and we got a lot, lot to do. Gotcha. Gotcha. And, and I, I want to stay on that topic for a second, because you talked about being, uh, you know, a black man that's a marketer and, and a, in a way sort of put in a box by some folks. Right. Yeah. How, how do you. How, how do you break out of, out of that? How do you break out of that box? I re- you know, it's tough. It's tough. And I don't think there is a, a handbook I can give to somebody to do mm-hmm. that. But it's really, you know, um, understanding different consumers and, and, and showing that, you, that you're, you know that and that you're able to market to different people, different backgrounds. And it really, you break out of that box by starting with humility. I mean, you're really being humble and, and, and saying, I don't know. And yeah. then as you, as you build from that, you, you, you begin to develop an expertise on how to talk and reach people. You know, I mean, the, uh, when I worked for Levi's, our, our number one target was working moms. <laughs> so, you know, I'm not, I'm not a mom <laughs> working, but I'm not a mom, you know, and uh, it, it really started with me saying I need to understand, you know, what, what, what are the nuances of being a working mom, you know, talk to working moms and listen yeah. and, and be able to take what I'm learning and applying it to the strategy and, and bringing that to life. And then even how moms are shopping, I mean, just really starting with saying, I don't know what I'm talking about here or understanding. Let me listen and learn, you know? And a lot of people have difficulty doing that and they shouldn't. It, ha- having humility and saying, I don't know, is not that you don't have great knowledge. That means that you put yourself in a position to ask what else is there? Is there, yeah. You know, yeah. And, 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 and being open to listening and learning. Gotcha, okay, all right. We got some... Uh... We got some great questions flying in from the audience. So I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to ask you one more question and then I want to okay. get to the audience questions because they are they're definitely interested in, in hearing <laughs> from, more from you about their you know, questions that they have. Um, what advice would you give uh, for approaching um, uh, multicultural marketing? I mean, I think you've already given some advice about sort of listening internally developing um, diverse teams. A- anything else you would add to that, Edward, before we get to the audience questions? I, I think, you know, you got to be blunt, you know, mm-hmm. to the organization and, and be fearless. And I can't say I've been that my, my whole career, you know, and I, I still have, it, have some today. But I think, you know, being able to put something out there about the consumers, what's happening in the marketplace, and making sure that, you know, you're creating an environment that's not necessarily just uncomfortable, but uncomfortable in a good way, you know, that people are continuously listening and learning, you know, just Mm -hmm. make sure you're nurturing that environment and being a part of that environment in in a way that you got to put your fears aside, you know, Um, so that's that's my advice. Love it, love it, love it. All right. Um, ready for some audience questions? I am. I am. I wore my Stevie <laughs> Wonder shirt today. Too, so imagine viewing the world through his eye, through his perception. You know. <laughs> yeah. I hear you. I hear you. All right. Um, first question: um, What challenges is Planet Planet Fitness uh, encountering when working to connect with diverse audiences? 
Conversely, what's working well? Well, I think Planet Fitness has a unique advantage, right? This brand was founded on an, being inclusive. I mean, the first mm-hmm. thing you walk with, you see when you walk into one of our gyms is we're the judgment-free zone, you know? And inclusion uh, is very important in our, in our industry in particular. And I've learned, you know, it's not just about different cultures, you know, then you have other things you can layer onto that, you know, age, body types, you know, uh, um, all kinds of things that keep people from uh, working out and stepping foot in the gym. You know, so we have the unique advantage in A, our brand was founded on inclusion and, and, and having a welcoming environment for everyone. But then B, we're, we have a co-mingled structure where obviously we have our corporate team, but, you know, we have franchisees and people that are on a very hyper local level engaging with their communities, you know, and our brand is going into places where other competitors aren't going, you know, uh, from urban parts of the city to the most rural areas, you know, and um, that gives us a unique perspective and it gives us a lot of ownership on a local level to to really bring the brand to life. Mm, Okay, love it. This next question, I feel like you may have answered this one uh, a little bit here in your last answer, but uh, when it comes to communicating with your consumers, uh, how do you how do you think about brand purpose and how does that impact your approach to marketing? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, uh, I was talking about this earlier today. You know, it, it goes back to the values that you put in place, you know, mm-hmm. as, as a company. You know, it, it blows my mind when I find out companies don't have values and, and, and that's not front and center. And not only do they not have values, it's not democratized throughout the organization mm-hmm. where every decision that's made should go back to those values. If you do that, you're not making a mistake. You're not doing something wrong because, you know, market from marketing to greeting somebody coming into a club, you know, should be rooted in what the organization sets as values. And that's, extremely important. If any, any of you guys are working for uh, brands that don't have that yet, stop everything and develop them now. You know, not just about what the organization it, it, uh, is or is not right now, but what you aspire to do, you know, too. So. Yeah, even as, even as a B2B marketer, I mean, having those values within your organization um, extremely important. You're absolutely right. It's not only about having them, but making sure that throughout your organization, you actually have the discipline to carry them out in every single thing that you do from teaching the new hires that come yeah. in through the, through the door to planning out your OKRs to how you're executing on marketing, sales, product. It all starts with those values. I, I couldn't agree with you more. And, and, and everyone within your organization should know. Them. I mean, it should be front and center no matter what anyone is doing. You know, if, if people that work for your brand don't know what the values are, then, you know, what's driving them? What's, yep. what, how are they making decisions, you know, overall? So that's very important to, to, and, and to keep evolving you know, yeah. to evolving. So, yeah. 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 You should, you should be looking at the values. You're right. And, and on a regular basis, even, you know, checking your performance up against the values. Yeah. And yeah. then to your point, the evolution of them, you know, it's okay to sit down uh, once a year and say, you know, do these values still make sense for where yeah. we're going? Yeah. And just think about all the brands that had to do that recently. I mean, we are in the midst of the biggest civil rights movement since the 60s, right? Mm. And a lot of brands found themselves on the outside, look, you know, looking on the outside of the conversation and asking, how do we deal with this? What are we supposed to do? You know, and they had to evolve very quickly, you mm-hmm. know, to not only project themselves in a different way, but to restructure even how they work and 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 how what what their teams look like i mean this is a time for change 
right now. So, and, um, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's keeping people on their toes like never before. <laughs> so, yeah. yeah. Yeah, absolutely. All right. Uh, another question here. And, and, and to those out there listening, the questions are great. So please do keep them, keep them coming. If you have more um, next question, uh, how do you define purpose-driven marketing and how are you bringing it to life? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's, you define that, like I just mentioned before, and I, I wrote an article on this in Forbes. I mean, you define it as really going back to your values and then, you know, your marketing projecting that, you know, your, your brand elements projecting that even down to a logo, you know, even down to the font that you're using. I mean, they should, you should be projecting your purpose and values everywhere, you know, and it should be very clear that the consumer knows what you stand for. So any marketing you're doing should, should purpose, the purpose should be front and center. Gotcha. Okay. Uh, next question here. Uh, how do you promote authenticity within your purpose driven marketing strategies? I feel yeah. Like a lot of the questions yeah. are, are, are somewhat aligned, but yeah, yeah go ahead. I mean, it, authenticity, you know, goes back to empathy, right? Is, you know, understanding what something really means to somebody, you know, mm -hmm. and putting yourself in their shoes, you know, and how, and bringing that to life in a creative way, you know, uh, in your brand voice. But it goes back to empathy. It goes back to connecting and then and understanding the elements of that connection and bringing it to life. So a lot of brands struggle with this. You know, a lot of brands have a lot of resources, a lot of budget, but they a lot of uh, brilliant people working for them. But, you know, it's, it's really understanding people. That's, that's, that's the tough part. I find a lot of brands struggle with and how to talk to people in meaningful ways. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And I, and I feel now more than ever on the consumer side, um, they can, they can spot and they can sniff out when a brand is not yeah. really being authentic. Right? Yeah, absolutely. And, and so, and so absolutely. trying to, trying to figure that out and, and make sure that, um, you are, you know, you know, speaking from the heart, you are, um, speaking in a language that, um, people can relate with and, and understand, uh, and that it's true and it's just not, you know, um, changing your, your logo, uh, because yeah. it's a certain holiday or, 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 or anything like that coming up, like what, you know, what are you doing beyond that? Right. Yep. And this is the worst thing you can do, right. Yeah. Is trying to be authentic, trying to connect with people and just failing miserably. <laughs> right. And a lot of companies, you know, have to pay the price, had to pay the price for that and brands, but, you know, uh, and had to backtrack and rethink and restructure things in a whole different way, you know? Mm -hmm. So um, uh, it's, it's an easy formula, as I mentioned before, it's about humility, building the right teams, listening, you know, and then bringing it to life and having the right people to bring it to life within your organization. So yeah. if you don't have it within your organization, outside of your organization, you know, that's yeah. fine too, but, um, that's the formula. Absolutely. Absolutely. And, you know, I, I think you just, uh, uh, laid out some really great advice, shared some really great insights, uh, with the audience. Um, you know, I'm, I'm curious to get your thoughts on what you think the next nine to, to 12 months looks like from a, uh, a, a multicultural marketing perspective right there's there's so much going on in the world right now right and <laughs> and uh I, i'm just curious to if you can look into the future i mean do you think brands you know you think we'll stop seeing less mistakes as as we move forward here i mean what are your thoughts here Edward? I, you know whenever i predict the future i've been wrong <laughs> so <laughs> you know um you know i think you know we're going to continue seeing the mistakes. I mean, it's just, that's just a reality of where we are right now. And that's, and that's okay. You know, mm -hmm. uh, but I just think, you know, 
we're starting to see an elevation of people within the organization like we've never seen before. People of different backgrounds, you know, different ethnicities, uh, different sexuality, even, you know, uh, we're just, we're seeing, you know, a, a real change happening, you know, within organizations. And the more this continues to happen and evolve, the less we're going to see mistakes happen, the better the marketing is going to get, the better the consumer experience is going to get, because you're now going to have a diversity of thought. You know, you're going to have a different representation for your brand, you know, that people can relate to, you know, so, you know, nine to 12 months is a lifetime nowadays. Yeah, that's true. That's true. It's moving, things are moving very fast uh, as, as we can as we, we all are experiencing, but uh, I'm I'm really hopeful. I'm 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 loving what I'm seeing now. You know, from content to the commercials I'm seeing to people being promoted to positions like never before that I've never thought I'd see. You know, um, I'm 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 excited about how things are changing, and they're changing in some instances very quickly, but in others, it's still it's extremely slow. Yeah, yeah. No, I hear you. And, and for me, uh, it's all about uh, sustainability, right? And, yes. and, and building for the future. And, and how do we make sure that the changes that are happening, the evolution that's happening is sustainable long term, because this yes. isn't a, a quick fix. Right? Yes, yes. But I think putting, putting people who understand it and get it in positions to make the decisions for the, for the whole organization that's going to create sustainability, you know, mm -hmm. seeing people of color, women, you know, now, you know, being in positions where they're making the decisions that reverberates throughout the whole organization, that's true sustainability, you know, so, uh, which is, which is amazing. Gotcha. Okay. Well, uh, I got one more question here before I think uh, we bring um, Pearl back in to see if there are any uh, additional questions. Yeah. You know, you, you mentioned um, you mentioned the values uh, earlier and, and great advice that, hey, if you're out there, you're watching this, your company doesn't have values, that should be the first thing you do. Go back and stop and, and create those. Any other additional pieces of advice for anyone that's listening right now that, hey, that wants to, you know, that doesn't really think that their company is doing a good job from a multicultural marketing perspective to say, okay, I'm going to go back into my organization tomorrow. And this is the first thing I'm going to do beyond the values. I think, you know, it's pulling in the key stakeholders and having very blunt conversations, you know, people in middle management or, you know, lower on the totem pole, as you may say, they can't change organizations. It's pulling in the key stakeholders, the people that can com completely change an organization and having some blunt conversations, you know? Mm -hmm. um, like I said, it's, it's tough because, you know, there's a lot of fear there, right? But now more than ever, it's a time to be fearless, you know, and, and, and to speak up, you know, like never before. I feel that. You know, yeah. I feel very empowered now to say, to have the, just to call things the way they are. And just, but the difference is not just bringing, you know, what's happening to light, but what's going to be the solution? Be solution oriented, you know, mm -hmm. on, on addressing mm -hmm. these issues. You know, that's, that's, that's the key. And that's how you're going to get people listening throughout the gotcha. organization and creating change. Gotcha. Gotcha. Well, as you were, were speaking just now, we got in three more questions oh, okay. uh, uh, from the audience. <laughs> it's a hot topic. So, I'll take yeah, them. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So um, what is your favorite marketing campaign that you've worked on? My favorite marketing campaign that worked, I get this question a lot and it's, it's the, it's the, it's one of the toughest ones. Uh, <laughs> For me to answer overall, I mean, I would say, you know, um, my favorite marketing campaign, I, you know, some of the best ones I've done, I, I were, with, were with Nike, I would have to mm. say, you know, because, you know, they have the ability to tap into, you know, street culture, you know, 
tap into African American culture, you know, in unique ways and show true authentic perspectives of the athletes to inspire people, you know. Mm -hmm. Uh, but some of my best, best uh, projects that I've worked on, you know, really the smaller ones, you know, and if I'm, you know, mention them, you probably won't even know what they are. They were smaller, they were hyper local, they were unique. I saw how it was impacting the community. You know, here in Chicago, we did something called a World Basketball Festival uh, on the south side of the city. And I grew up on the south side of Chicago. And we uh, brought out basketball courts and had these talks with kids, you know, brought in these amazing athletes. The whole Olympic basketball team came, came and played and come and put on a concert, a free concert. And, you know, for me to see the community that I grew up in and that's really gone through some tough times, you know, just feeling a moment where they're lifted you know, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. they're together and, you know, they're not, it's not about shootings and crime or poverty. It's just, it was just all inspiration and, 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 and love, you know, and um, I just seeing those kids faces, you know, being able to talk to somebody like Scotty Pippen, you know, talk to somebody like Derek Rose and, you know, that, that means a lot to me. Yeah, and, and I, I appreciate you saying that because there are so many great marketing campaigns out there that you may not necessarily see on TV or yeah. in, a, in a magazine, right? But what you just talked about has a direct impact on the community, and, yeah. and, that, and that's, that's what it's all about. So I, I appreciate you sharing that particular one. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Next, next question. Uh, the past year, we've seen incredible innovation across all industries. Uh, tell us about new and innovative ways your brand is connecting with consumers today. I mean, really, you know, for us, it's, it's uh, uh, becoming more omni-channel driven, right? Mm -hmm. One thing that happened, you know, on March 17th, when all of our clubs closed was our national partnerships team put together an amazing campaign called United We Move. And, uh, you know, there were just 20 minute workouts, right? On Facebook Live, they're free, open to people. And, um, you know, it was a big moment where we saw that, you know, digital fitness, you know, and we knew it was coming, it was on the horizon, you mm -hmm. know, uh, uh, is, is the now. You know, people want to work out, have access to working out any place, anytime, you know, anywhere. You know, we have great market penetration across across the U.S., you know, uh, in terms of it being a company. But if I'm in my hotel room and I want to get a workout in, but I don't want to go down to the, even the local gym downstairs, you know, being able to get on this, my phone, yeah. you can't really see it, this filter here, <laughs> I don't have an invisible <laughs> phone yet, but uh, getting on my phone and getting a quality workout, 20 minute workout, that's, that's the evolution of our brand now. So we're becoming, we're leading with digital uh, in, in a great way and really becoming a omni-channel retailer. And people mm -hmm. have never thought about that in the fitness industry. And I'm excited about that, you know? Yeah. So, yeah. 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 And this next question, I feel like you, you just kind of answered that with uh, the way that you, you talked about how the brand pivoted. But what are ways your is your brand working to stand out in the eyes of the consumer? I feel like you I mean you just you just kind yeah, of. Right? Yeah, I mean, you know, uh, we're one of the few brand uh, fitness brands, you know, that can can do national campaigns. You know, mm -hmm. and we created a, such an accessible model to people, right? For 10 bucks a month, you can get access to a premium gym and facility and digital mm -hmm. content to work out, you know, and to connect with trainers for 10 bucks a month. And like I said, we're going to places where our competition is not going, mm -hmm. you know, um, from urban locations, you know, to rural locations, you know, and, and treating those consumers the same. And, and, but at the same time, being very hyper, uh, 
connected from a hyper local standpoint. You know, the gyms are part of the community. You know, they're yeah. anchors in the community. You know, from you know partnering with the local high schools. You know, to partnering with the local boys and girls club, which 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 we have a national partnership with. You know, so it's. Um, it's 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 a lot of fun. <laughs> Let's put it that way. It definitely, it's definitely keeping you busy. That's yeah, sure. <laughs> and, and and it's it's it, it's a great formula for our brand to stand out, you know, to people. So, um, um, you know, so we have a we have a. Uh, it's not easy either, but yeah. you know the fact that we're able to do the things that we're doing we're doing because of the size. Of, of our of our brand and because of how connected we are and how hyper local we are it's mm -hmm. it's easier than what our competition is having to deal with yeah i mean you you you've made a commitment to go to where your your consumers are right yeah. regardless of where yeah. where they are and uh you know if you're if you're living by that commitment and focused on it yeah it uh it, it can be amazing and the yeah. and the and the returns can be great, right? Um, so that's awesome. And, and as I mentioned before, inclusion is at the forefront of our brand's DNA. You mm -hmm. know, we mm -hmm. are the judgment-free zone. You know, I know that that seems like, you know, a small part of what we are uh, outside of the value proposition, you know, but it's, it's the most important part you know, um, is that we are truly the judgment-free zone. We welcome anybody in our doors. I've seen a 97-year-old man, you know, working out and feeling comfortable within, within our walls. And I've seen 13-year-olds, you know, and mm -hmm. being able to do that and having that type of messaging is extremely important for us and why mm -hmm. I am was excited to join this brand and to be a part of it. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And, I, and I think like what you're saying there, um, you touch on a, on a very interesting point. I want to sort of dive into that a little bit, right? You talked about judgment-free zone values. You're excited to work for the brand. I think that's super important too, that, you know, as someone who is in the workforce and looking to um, uh, work at different organizations, right? That's important too, to, as a marketer, to make sure that you know, your values and beliefs align with where you're going to be at um, for your career. Yeah. I mean, you know, long gone are the days where you're lucky you should be here. <laughs> that just, just be here. You know, uh, if anything, the youth have changed that. And that's been the very mm -hmm. shift is people want to work for organizations that, that embrace their values and mm -hmm. they have the option to leave now you know, um, and, and, or create their own, even, you know, mm -hmm. just things some people do and create amazing brands, you know, so uh, we're, in a, we're in a whole different ball game right now, then you're lucky you're just here kind of thing. Yeah. So. Absolutely. All right. Uh, one last question we have here. Um, are you adjusting your marketing and digital transformation initiatives or investments over the next two to three years based on 2020? <laughs> two to now, three now years, I, let's try I, next yeah. week. <laughs> <laughs> you know, if anything, you know, that uh, this past year has taught us is we have to be extremely nimble, you know? And, you know, I've never in my career been this close to planning to execution, you know, I mean, we're making decisions and, and changing, you know, our mix and how we're reaching people constantly, you know? Yeah. And like I said, it's close, cl very close to execution, you know? Uh, things that we would have made a decision a year, year ago for, now we have to make that decision within a few weeks mm -hmm. you know, because of what's happening in our society and with this pandemic and so, it's and how people are, you know, changing. You know, people yeah. are people are viewing content in a different way. You know, people are on platforms in a different way, and it's happening extremely fast. I've never seen anything like this before. But how how do you how do you balance that though, Edward? Right, because as a marketer, you do have to have long term 
goals, yeah. right? You do yeah. have to you do have to have something that you're 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 aiming for yeah. for the brand. But at the same time, to your point, you got to remain agile as well too, and making sure you're you know you have your your ear to the street in terms of what's going yeah. on. Yeah. So uh, you know, I, I I know for me as a, a marketer on the B two B side. That's always something I'm constantly thinking about and try to balance it. And I and I'd be curious to to hear from from you, get your thoughts on how do you go about balancing that? You, I mean, the way that you balance is a, you know, you have your clear objectives, your strategy on how you're going to get there, mm-hmm. but you have to be able to stop and change quickly. <laughs> you have to create flexibility in within your organization, uh, so you can pivot and 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 have you know, the tweaks necessary to adjust to what's happening in the marketplace. So yes, you have your long-term goals, you're moving towards that and you have a strategy, you're reaching that, but you also have to keep tweaking that along the way, keep evolving, keep evolving your organization, keep evolving your strategy, just forever having that mindset of evolution and have being a growth, growth planner, so. Gotcha. All right, I see. Uh, I see. Pearl has yeah, popped we got back some in. company here. <laughs> hey, how's it going? Mind if I join you? Yeah, yeah sure. Going. We're just we're just kicking it here. Kick yeah. It here. <laughs> wow, I didn't realize that it was only ten dollars a month to join Planet Fitness. Yes. Yes. I can join Maybe twenty something of your locations and still have some some money for lunch. That's right. At the rate of what I was paying. <laughs> <laughs> you just gotta get rid of one of your channels. That's all. What yeah, well, doing? I did. I did actually. I did. Good to go. it, so I have some yeah. extra cash laying around. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and it's so great yeah. to hear that you're supporting so many good causes. So yeah, yeah. I definitely prefer to support brands that are doing doing good with their yeah. products. Yeah, yeah. Well, thank you so much for joining us today, Edward and Carell. Thank you for having me. Yeah, thank, thank you for, for having us. Uh, thank yeah. you. Thanks for being a great uh, talk show host. Corel <laughs> 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 has a different future out of him here. You know? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Got to get that podcast going. That podcast money. <laughs> yes. yes. So. Brand Innovators will sponsor your podcast. Hey, yeah, I, may, I, may, I, may hold, I may hold you to that, Pearl. I may hold Uh-oh. you to that now. <laughs> I'm not the one who, who signs the checks now. <laughs> I want my commission. I got your first option. Oh. You know? <laughs> lots of talk, lots of talk. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, we, both, we hope to have you both back on the BI stage soon. Thank you. Have really really enjoyed it. All right. <laughs> Take care, everyone. Take care. Bye, everybody. Bye-bye. Enjoy your weekend. <laughs> So thanks so much to Edward and Carell for closing our day on multicultural marketing. It was a great day of speakers and we are excited for all of our upcoming days on this topic. We hope you all went, um, join Brand Innovators next week on May 25th at 12 p.m. Eastern time for the D2C Marketing Summit. We will be joined by marketing leaders from the Clorox Company, Empire Today, Belk, Bottle Cap, Stringsmith, Bodega Brands, Goat Rodeo Capital, Ember Technologies, Ergo, Kimberly Clark, Team Bespo, 